Okay, my man. We should gotcha. be large and in charge right now. You you good? We got everything going? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Well, we're just a little bit late. Sorry about that, boys and girls. We've had some internet uh, connections, and you just really don't know anything about what just happened, and it has been quite the deal to get this boy going. Uh, the internet's just a tad bit slow down there in Louisiana, but um, we That's want to good. welcome you here to the uh, Rip Outdoors Facebook Live podcast. Um, we have got as a special guest today, Mr. Captain Lee Daldrill, and he's with Calcasieu Point Ch uh, Charters. I'd say, is that the Lake Charles area? Is that, uh, would that be correct? Yes, sir. We're located here in Lake Charles, yes, sir. All right. Well, we, uh, we're glad to have you, Lee. And um, like I said, people just really don't know just what all has happened. We had a little, when this stuff is new, it, um, we just have a little bit of internet connections and some places are slower than others and Lee, bless his heart, he's had to take off and run to a neighbor's, grab a laptop. Oh, it was crazy. It, it was just absolutely nuts. But, hey, we're here. We're, uh, we're large and in charge. We are live here on Facebook. We want to thank the good people with uh, Fripp and Folly, the great uh, t-shirt company that uh, has bringing this uh, to us. Uh, comfortable t-shirts for the outdoorsman, the sportsman. Check them out, rippandfolly.com. If you can't find an outdoor shirt to match your needs, and buddy, you're a hard person to please. They're, they're good stuff. All right, Lee. What's happening, man? That's a cool-looking room you got in there. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's uh, It used to be my office, but now with three kids, it's turned into their playhouse. <laughs> well, it looks nice, man. Hell, all I can see is... Uh, Big old checks right there, hundred thousand dollars and two hundred fifty thousand no, dollar checks. No, that's, that's ten. <laughs> that's ten. You're missing a zero. I wish it's <laughs> hey, well, um, uh, no, tell everybody out here. I, I know who you are, but uh, tell everybody what's going on, what your uh, what your main profession is, and all, and uh, and uh, get everybody kind of acclimated to uh, Captain Lee Daldrill. Well, uh, for those who are watching that uh, haven't watched our episode together, uh, I've been doing this now for this is my tenth season uh, as a charter captain down here in Lake Charles, Louisiana, uh, focusing mainly on Calcasieu, Sabine, uh, and other estuaries here close by. Do a little fishing in the Gulf, um, you know, mainly target speckled trout, redfish, and flounder. Uh, that changes season by season, but uh, you know, with you, we we really uh, wanted to target those sight casts and redfish and kind of glad we did it makes for a little a little more exciting trip and especially uh when you're videoing it it makes for some really really good footage so um, that's really what i focus on is the sight cast and redfish uh fish professional redfish tour for about five years and uh it's kind of slowed down on that and focused more on the business and, uh, so right now we're kind of getting kicked off on our 2018 fishing season and it's off to a good start right now for sure now, what's the, the area is, you said is right around Lake Charles or south of there, right in that area? Yes, sir. We're, uh, I, I do most of my fishing right here, right in Lake Charles, actually. Uh, we have a series of bodies of water that starts at Lake Charles and it works its way to the Gulf. Uh, you know, it goes to Calcasieu Lake and then on further south, you'll run into the Gulf. So uh, we, we stay in this area right here. It's in southwest Louisiana. We're not far from the Texas coast. In the Texas border, um, it's about 30 miles from here, so it's a hop, skip, and a jump for the people from Houston and those areas that want to come take advantage of uh, some little more liberal limits. And you, know, you can keep 10 speckled trout in Texas, you can keep 15 here. The size limit's 12 instead of 15, so we get a big draw from Texas over here to Lake Charles as well as the casinos. So that's right, man. That's that's big casino country over there now, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. Mean, that, uh, that Lake Charles, man. Holy crap! Isn't there uh, the, the birds? Didn't ha uh, didn't uh, uh, golden nugget? The birds golden, golden nugget. nugget. That's that's right. Gold. The old golden nugget got a place over there. That's right. Yes, sir. So, man, I'll we tell you what. That, 
that can be pretty lucrative for the guides in that area, it, can it not? I mean, there's a lot of corporate outings there. Yeah, there can be. Um, you get more of the, you know, the people looking for weekend getaways and stuff like that. A um, lot of couple trips and small business trips. We don't do a whole lot of corporate stuff out of the casinos, but um, you know, I've really been focused in the past couple of years on catering to those people and being able to pick them up at the casino. Uh, and it seemed to pay dividends for us uh, catering to those people a little better because it uh, it's, it's a little tougher for the guys to keep their boats down south uh, on Big Lake to leave, go pick them up, drop them back off. Uh, you know, when we, we pick up up here and we fish this area, this is where I grew up fishing, um, you know, the Lake Charles area. So it makes it easy for us. Uh, and you're about how, how far east from, uh, let, we'll get a landmark from like Beaumont, about an hour? We're, yeah, we're about 45 miles east of Beaumont. And then from, say, Shreveport, but what is that, about two and a half hours? No, it's a little further. It's about four hours from Shreveport. Is it? Um, and we're about two hours, uh, two and a half hours from Baton Rouge, uh, about three hours from New Orleans. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Well, now, you, uh, I know you, we'll be talking quite a bit about fishing here in a little bit, but you just came off of what else you do, and that's, that's guiding waterfowl hunts. I mean, you, you're a big duck hunter, and, and I got tired of looking at all them pictures on Facebook with all them, all them landers full of full of ducks. So tell a little bit about the about the duck season that was going on this year. Yeah, we had a good duck season. Um, definitely off from the years past, but uh, very blessed and have a have a really really great farm that we're allowed to hunt, and uh, it, it's very very good. Um, you know, we have a 60-day season down here. We kick it off with teal season first that we do in September. And that'll be a 15-day 15, uh, 15 season in September. And then our early goose season starts um, first week of November. And we roll from November to um, around January the 20th on the ducks. And then we roll all the way to about February the 12th on the geese. So we have a, a year full of it where I work. Now, it starts in, uh, you said it starts in September. Now, when does it end? It ends in February, the goose season, but it's just the early teal season in September for a 15-day stretch. Really? That, I, I guess, and y'all obviously had a bunch of teal. Yes, sir. We, uh, with all the rice fields and ag down here, we uh, we normally have a good teal season. Um, it's very, very odd not to. It's a pretty, pretty good area. You know, you've got all this marsh down here that surrounds what we've talked about, what we fished, the Calcasieu Lake area. And between that and agriculture fields, it makes for a pretty good area for them to come down to every year. And uh, it also works well with the September season, uh, teal season, to do the blasting cast uh, because the teal season, uh, you know, they fly early, they fly quick, and you normally either get them or you don't. And you're done early, and then that leaves the rest of the day to go fishing. So we do a lot of that. September. What What is going on right now? If somebody is sitting here watching this the millions upon millions of people that are sitting here watching this right now and they're going man you know I've been thinking about going someplace different you know what about coming down to Hackberry <laughs> down to Louisiana yeah. yeah it's uh it's definitely a draw um you know we, there's a lot of things here that uh, especially right now uh it's kind of like the transition period normally it's still cold by now, uh, but we have had a significant warm up, which I'm sure y'all have too. Um, normally, y'all are still snowed in now. We're talking about that, but uh, yeah, we've we've seen our water temperatures hit 70 last week, uh, which is unbelievable. I mean, that's that's very very warm for the first week of March. Uh, so, what that's done is is really kick started everything ahead of time, and we're really fishing, you know, mid April type conditions right now. So. It's, that heat's really accelerated our fishing. Um, you know, a lot of mixed reports right now. Uh, if we have a big, big runoff. A uh, lot of rain north of us, a lot of runoff, a lot of river water coming down the Calcasieu and Sabine rivers, and that can throw a lot of anglers off, especially if you don't know how to adapt uh, to those conditions. Uh, that muddy water and, and a lot cooler water, uh, not only is it, 
play hell on the pitch to, you know, staging and, and moving different places that they're normally not. It also uh, it messes with the angler's mind when they look at that dirty, dirty water. Yeah. Uh, and it can definitely throw you off. But a lot of that water is surface water, and you, know, you just have to fish like you know they're there. And, um, those fish, they'll stage up and get in a little bit deeper water, and that salt water stays down low, and they're there. So we've been focusing on that. Um, catching a lot of redfish right now uh, and today was the first day I got to go trout fishing in a while and we did really well for the short window we had to fish. Uh, biggest one was about five pounds but right now is about when we start catching our big trout all the way through about June. So yeah but a five pound trout is pretty big. That is, that is. That'd be a trout of a lifetime for a lot of people but uh, you know that's what we're known for. We're known for big trout here. Uh, we catch a lot of them. Uh, let a lot of them swim, and you know it's 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 fun. It only takes catching one of those things to be hooked. It's it's like having a green head come in the hole, or you know a turkey coming up to your call. It's it's just one of those things that grabs you, and it's hard to let go of. You know, you're talking about that. Is now you just are you using shrimp or are you using artificial? Right now on the redfish, we've been using um, we've been using a lot of the eager wedge tails. Uh, in the chartreuse colors. The main thing with, with the dirty Shemont, water. And, yes, sir. That's Mr. Ken Shamont with uh, the eager face. Um, a lot of that water, though, you have to match your color with your water. That's the biggest key down here. Um, we've been going a lot lately with the uh, with this. It's like a copper penny right there. Yeah. The chartreuse. Yeah. yeah. Just that's a little swim bait. That's been a hot. Yeah, a little swim bait and. When we get this dirty water, we've got these these wedge tails right here. It creates a lot of vibration. It's almost like a spinner bait. Yeah. And you really, really need that in this dirty water because you got to appeal to those fish's senses. If you're not going to use scent, which would be dead shrimp or you know some of your scented baits that are out there, um, if you can't have the scent, you need to have the vibration. And if you can do both, then that's that much better. So what we'll do is we'll use a bait like this and we'll we'll tip it with shrimp. Just to give it a little bit of scent, and, and man, it's it's been all my little big time. And so that uh, new penny, isn't that what you called it? New penny? Is that the color? Yeah, it's it's a new penny. No, no, a new penny a, in chartreuse. The uh, co it's a copper penny with the on the eager baits. Um, well, well, you know that's uh, a well known color. Is, right. Is new penny. Yeah, those well. those wedge tails. I fish with a wedge tail many a time. I see uh, my old Uncle Bill Fonder, and you remember old Uncle Bill. He's he's on here watching. So me and him both, we we fished a wedge tail quite a bit in our day, and so I knew that Ken Shimon had taken over the wedge tail part and uh, started egret baits. And so uh, that's good that you're using them, and and uh, they seem to be doing okay. But you know, I just thought you just went down there and just threw black and chartreuse. You know, that's uh, right. That's that's the old cliche. You just show up in Louisiana and. <laughs> Put on a black and chartreuse and yeah. send her down and catch a red fish. And that's not far off the truth. It's not far off the truth. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little different world here than Venice, uh, which is, I know what you're referring to. Uh, but, you know, it's been good so far. Um, expect that jetty bite to kick off here soon, too. I know you like getting down there and. Well, yeah, I like, I like that. Like now, now, tell people about the jetties, what the jetties are and stuff. So. So they'll know what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. So, uh, so our jetties here, just like any other jetties, that's uh, you know, it comes out of a pass. We have Calcasieu Pass that starts way up 30 miles north of Lake Charles and comes all the way down the river, and it hits the where it hits the beach and where the ship channel enters the Gulf of Mexico is where our rocks start uh, that we call jetties, and it is just historically and improves time and time again it's one of the best fish spots there there possibly ever was so um, those fish they stage up there though in the winter time and the, the early spring in big big numbers um, because that's where most of the bait is you got that deep deep water and you've got that influence of, of good salty water in the gulf and then all those fish from the bays and the ship channel and everywhere up north that are looking to get out of that super super fresh stuff um, you know, like we talked about, that salt water stays down down low, but after, you know, 30, 40, 50 days of continual floodwaters, eventually that salt water can get completely pushed out. And then what that does is push all those fish down to the Gulf where that high salinity water is. And you can have some 
unbelievable trips at the jetties this time of year, uh, as you've seen and a lot of our customers. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen we'll in a while, on. and I, I'd love to be seeing it again. Now, here's the thing about fishing down in the jetties. I'm going to tell you folks that don't live down there and don't get to fish, and if you're a flatlander or you're a hillbilly or, or whatever, you know, living around, you're up north or you guys are waiting for ice to melt and this, that, and the other. The jetties, as he's talking about down there, where the ship channel empties into the Gulf. Buddy, if you get in there when it's, when it, it don't even have to be completely right. It don't have to be full on. You can still go down there and catch those fish. And when you get a hold of those redfish there, especially those bull reds, you'll feel like that you are hooked to a jet ski. That yes, thing sir. will absolutely whip your butt. So don't go down there with some wimpy tackle or whatever. Now if you want to go and you want to fight him and you want to play with him and and uh, you know you want to see what it's like on light tackle or whatever, you ain't going to get very many of them in. I can tell you that right now. Because they, they're going to take it. And then they'll take your rod, your reel, and if you if they're big enough, they may even take your boat away from you. I mean, that's just yes, how sir. mean they are. And then Yes, like sir. I said, then you'll, you'll get into black drum. You might catch one of them in there, and them things will pull your string, too. And then who knows? You can catch some fish down there with Lee that you don't even know the name of. Sometimes you can catch fish and show Lee, and he'll go, I don't know what that is. And so it's just, it's never a dull moment. You can always go down there, and you can always catch fish. It's just a, it's a wonderful time. It's a lot of fun. And... You know, one thing about it, you go down there, you're in the sun, you know, you got the sun beating down on you and everything, and a good lead way into that would be to get you one of these wicking, fripp and folly shirts. This this one right here has got your name all over it. Look, look, look what that's got on there. Look at that. I, I can't uh -huh. see it. It's, it's all blurry on my side. It's all, yeah. okay, redfish tail, got it. Yeah, got it. yeah look at there, yeah. baby. Got your redfish tail. I mean, these are really, really really nice shirts you guys ought to check out Frip and follow they're the ones that is bringing this this silliness that we're doing right here and the fun that we're having right here they're the ones that's bringing this and it's uh they're they're a good company Frip and folly com. check them out and uh, you get down there you'll want some good wicking lightweight shirts to uh, keep the sun off of you and the Frip and folly long sleeve wicking shirts are just perfect all right you got you. I see you. you you're rattling around. You're, you're kind of like a Uncle Bill in his in his tackle shop over there. You're, you're scrummaging around on your rod and reel. Are you uh, you going to show us what kind of what kind of rigs that we've got to we got to use? Yeah. Because I was talking absolutely. about them redfish. So what you got there that we can we can see? Well, first thing I wanted to show y'all. Uh, was what we've been really catching these trout on. Um, Mr. Ken had brought this bait on last year, and I fell in love with the last year, and have absolutely just have gone to throwing basically nothing but this, especially with this cold weather pattern and everything like this. This right here is called a rip stick. Oh yeah, right little crank bait. See that one's on the beat. Oh, it's a it's a jerk bait. It's a small. Oh, okay, jerk yeah, bait. I see the lip now. Okay. Okay, that's not any surprise down here that the speckled trout love jerk baits. They've always loved them, uh, and the smaller the better with them. Now the problem has been getting something you can cast. You know, because yeah, we know they like the little yozuris and um, you know some of the little ra uh, rapalas and the small little. Twitch jerk baits, but the problem's been casting. Well, mm -hmm. Ken has kind of combated that and, and found a way to make these suckers really, really cast. I'm trying to see. Here we go. I've got a transparent one here. You can really see. It's oh, got a weight in it. Yeah, it's yeah. got a weight, a casting weight in it, uh -huh. but it's magnetized to where it holds I got right you. there until you throw you. it. So it holds yeah. forward. And when That's you cool. cast it, it's backwards and it gives you you know 25 percent on your cast so and that's crucial with speckled trout fishing because you know we're always looking for something we can cast a long ways um because in that shallow water you just can't get close to them now did you uh, tell me that ken shamont came up with that uh 
not I'm not sure that Mr. Keen uh, developed the, the actual idea. I wish uh, he was watching uh, right now. I truly I, wish that he was watching. I'm pretty sure he is. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, Ken, anyway, if you're that, watching, he, buddy. he found a, he found a way to get these baits into our hands and to where they work and cast like they need to and look like they need to, and they're some of the best baits out there. They look great. For trout they fish. look great. And now that's under the egret uh, flag, too? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can go uh, egretbaits.com and you go on there, and you're looking for uh, the ripstick, zombie ripstick. Zombie right ripstick. There. Yes, sir. Okay. They've got them in a wide range of colors. And another thing, too, um, uh -huh. tell a lot of my guys, you know, take fish with them and they want to go buy them, and I, I show them to them, uh, and they get on the Internet and they're like, well, Lee, all they had in the saltwater series was uh, these five colors. And don't be afraid to click on the freshwater series. That's where the best colors are, in my opinion. Uh, this is a freshwater color here. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. This is a freshwater color here, you know, the, the shiner, the golden shiner. So don't be afraid of looking at the freshwater stuff because all, he, all he's doing is changing the hooks really um, yeah. right there yeah. he's got a BMC instead yeah. of the little small mustache so yeah. anyway okay. that's just definitely a pointer there as far as uh, when you're shopping for these baits if you do look for them make sure you check out the freshwater not just the salt water alright now if, if someone just says okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head down somewhere in that area I mean, would they get on Calcasieu themselves on the Cape Calcasieu Lake? Is that where you're saying they that you know somebody ought to be on right now? Or uh, would absolutely, it be yeah. Cal okay. Calcasieu is is definitely a a place you you want to be right now. Uh, between Calcasieu and Sabine, much rather be on Calcasieu right now. Sabine has a huge influx of fresh water. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Bill's done told you they're they're letting everything go in Toledo Bend in anticipation for a lot more rain so uh, I'm not sure that they've got all nine open right now um, but you know they're probably letting it rip so obviously they are it's very flooded so when you drive over the Louisiana Texas border you can see it rolling through there right now it's all well, now flooded. the best so. thing anybody can do is come down there and fish with you just hire you because I know you're going to put them on Absolutely. I mean, my, uh, my, bo my boy X Games now he knows where the where the, he hates that. He hates that, that nickname. He right. hates it with a passion. But look at him. Doesn't he look like he just come off the Olympics? He should have been a snowboarder or whatever. I mean, he's he's got it, man. You could have done a half pipe. I could. I could. You just see your your gangly butt up there doing that half pipe and spinning no, around. I couldn't see me doing that. I could see me falling. <laughs> That's about it. Oh, but That's yeah, I mean. It. Got plenty of room. I mean, he's always got him a big old boat that'll, that'll fly everywhere. Now, did now do you you fish some offshore a little bit too? Don't you? Do you don't you do some of that? I do. I do. Um, I do a lot of offshore fishing. Actually, every every waking second I get that I can be out there, I'm out there. Um, I uh, I help out a couple people with running their boats, their private offshore boats, and then also fish with a a close knit group of friends that. Um, that have the passion that I do to be out there and we spend a lot of time chasing blue marlin, tuna fish, um, a lot of grouper fishing, sword fishing, you name it, we, we try to do it. Um, we take it pretty seriously, but I don't do any guided offshore stuff besides uh, near shore, speckled trout, um, redfish, that kind of stuff. Um, it's just kind of something that I really enjoy doing out there and kind of like to keep it as a fun thing instead of a a career out there so yeah yeah that's a, that's a whole nother world out there isn't it oh absolutely absolutely it's it's unbelievable i love it now I love what it about you how many tournaments are you going to fish this year this year i'll probably end up fishing about four tournaments i've cut back tremendously on the amount of tournaments i fish um just due to the fact of missing work it's it's unreal trying to keep up with a, a business and running a couple boats a day and and fishing tournaments and being gone it's just it's a tough deal and uh, I love doing it while I did it and I you know glad I had the success I had while I did it but uh, it was just time to go to work um, 
I may get back into it a little further on down the road, but as of right now, I, I'm not going to be fishing any of the tours. So I'll be fishing some of the opens and some of the smaller tournaments, but uh, definitely on a sabbatical from that for, for a little while anyway. Some of the big old checks you got back there, did you take them over to the bank? Did they, could you, did they deposit them in your account with that big old check? Did you carry them in there? I tried. They didn't. They didn't want them there. <laughs> I'd have took it. <laughs> hey, it's got your name on it. Got some zeros. That's fine. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm telling you. Now, let me tell you what, what. When I fished with Captain Lee, uh, when we were down there, and we shot a show. We kind of wound around back in there. He blindfolded me for one thing. He wouldn't let me. Uh, he wouldn't let me look at where we were going. So he he blindfolded. Blindfolded me, but made Eric sit on the front of the boat and not face the front, and video was coming in, so we wouldn't know where we was. Uh, now that was it was more hot. It seemed like it was hot weather then, but those redfish were what what you guys call tailing. When yes, sir. You know, kind of like that shirt I showed you with just the tail, and you could see the see the spot on them or whatever. And we were pitching and having some fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something, boys. Now I love me some crappie fishing, and as does Captain Lee. He's we, we may even talk it. about that here in a little bit because he's over on uh, he's over on Lake Lake. right now. But but now let me tell you, that's right, Sack of Lake. And but and I love to just catch about anything. I like big old catfish, and that's just fun. But when you're in this calm bay and you're just easing along in there, ain't a breath of wind. You can you can hear. A gull from eight miles away and then you start seeing them tails or some little ripple on the water where them redfish are starting to feed and they're they're down in here and that tail starting to stick up in the water and you make that cast over there and you see that big dude come up and grab that thing buddy there ain't nothing better than that right there now when what time of year is that or do they do that all the time they don't um, you know I went last week and checked on them to see if they're back in that marsh and uh they're not right now but we did have some significant freezes normally i can just about find them 12 months out of the year in the marsh uh but right now there's definitely a, a shortage of them um, a lot of fish died during the freeze we actually had two hard freezes but uh, the first one was pretty significant uh, on the fish kill uh, we don't think it did you know, as far as impacting the population of fish, I don't think it did that, but I think it impacted the population of fish that doesn't leave the marsh. Um, I think those fish uh, suffered a hit, um, which there'll be more. As soon as it warms up a little more, um, we get that 70 degree water for an extended period of time. We get this flood water out of here, they'll be back. But uh, definitely was impacted big time by the freeze uh, because this is the least amount of fish I've seen in the marsh. Uh, probably in my guide career so you know at now, this point in time well now they're down there feeding on them crab aren't they a lot of times yeah and especially when there's not so many mullet um, or or any other fin fish they're definitely leaning on the crabs yeah. uh, and they love them that's one of their favorite food you know now and some of those uh, baits like you showed those egrets of uh, egret baits right there that I mean that swim bait would have worked excellent you know in there with those fish in that marsh and well heck even some of those uh, well that lipless uh, or that uh, little jerk bait yeah you, no uh, that jerk bait's unbelievable for it that right there now, I mean they dropped the hammer on that thing right right and and basically what you're going to go to um, you know once you get in those grassy areas instead of a you know, you've got a, a jig head here, your regular right. jig head. This is on a Bayou Chub, which is a great, great color here. Um, it's, it's an avocado, um, basically a watermelon red color. But, you know, so once you start getting in that grassy area and you're throwing something like this right here, yeah. you're going to want to go to a more of a weedless setup, what we call a weighted weedless. Yeah. Let's see if I got one here for you. But you want to try to combat all that grass and get more bait every time because you know, let's face it, you don't get a too too many shots. But when you do, you want to capitalize on it. So um, it's it's really, really important to make sure that everything is is a go. 
you know, when you do get that shot. You saw there's, there's so many different variables down there. I mean, are, are we making this sound like it's hard, or or is it really not as hard as what, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm just going from everywhere on on all this, the jetties and the marshes, but I'm just trying to let everybody know there are just so many different ways and areas down there that you can just catch fish. And right now you're showing this weedless, how this, so that's weightless and weedless, but you could probably put a little weight in there if you needed it, couldn't you? We, uh, I normally always have weight. This, just for showing y'all as far as the demonstration purpose, this was the only one I had right now. But normally I'm gonna be using a weight right here. Right, to, yeah. And it's called a weighted weedless. Owner makes them, um, in my opinion, you can't go too big on the hook for redfish with this kind of stuff. But, um, you know, five, six alt is great. This is a six alt right here. But, you know, you really want to make sure that it's right. right there. That's right. You can get them. That's right. You but know, to my original question right here, are, we're not trying to make this that hard. I mean, really, I mean, no. somebody can come down there that has never been there and they can actually catch a few fish. I mean, without. Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah. And, and I have a lot of customers that, you know, they kind of, it's, it's really fun seeing a lot of these people morph into fishermen. You know, they'll come with you and they've got a lot of interest, but don't know how to apply it. They come with you, they have a great trip and, you know, you don't want people going to all your fishing spots, but, you know, a lot of my people will communicate with me that, hey, look, I'm here to learn and, you know, I don't mind teaching and all that. And it's, it's great to see some of those people, you know, really kind of grow as a fisherman and, and learn our estuary. And, be successful you know I have some customers that you know went from not knowing how to throw a baitcaster to now you know they'll call me when they're fishing a trip by themselves here and taking their own boat and they may have more fish than I do just you know by paying attention listening and, and taking it all in on these guided trips you know a $600 education is is very valuable on our lake I can promise you it's there's a lot to be learned in one day fishing here. Well, we're talking here with Captain Lee Daldrill with Calcasieu Point Charters, and he's right around the Lake Charles, Louisiana. That would be southwest Louisiana, just up from the Gulf. He offers Gulf trips out there. If you want to fish a little, just a little uh, around the offshore, inshore marshes, he duck hunts. I mean, man, I mean, he. You talk about all seasons. I mean, that's that's you. Calcasieu Point All Season Charters is what that is. I mean, you you pretty much do it. Um, it's a lot of fun down there. Uh, I know you guys will enjoy it. Another uh, a place that's pretty close over there that I, I hear through the grapevine that uh, you've been going over there. We was talking about Sacale, which is crappie. Uh, what's going on on Toledo Bend? Toledo Bend has been exceptional. Uh, I personally haven't been going too much. My brother's been going, it seems like, twice a week, two or three times a week, and they have been absolutely crushing them on little road runners. Uh, those, those fish are pushing up right now and spawning uh, mid-lake around the Pendleton Bridge area, and they have absolutely wore them out. Uh, they fished a tournament this weekend, and it was a 25-fish tournament, and, uh, you know, for... I think the closest thing to them was 17 pounds, and they had 47 pounds with 25 fish. So they, that's a little reflection of what kind of fish is up there right now and what they're doing. It's it's pretty incredible, and the bass fishing is not far off that right now either. The bass fishing is incredible. So, so they've got the water running, but so the lake's up. Right, right. The lake is up right now, but uh, when the lake's up, it creates some pretty pretty good situations. Oh yeah, well you got that new water. The only problem is I'd hate I'd I'd hate for those crappie to spawn in that new water because right, that right. water gonna be gone here if they're rocking and rolling and shooting it out. But but there's so much opportunity down there in, in that area within an hour's drive. What what all is in just from where you're at? If you just circle around an hour's drive of the opportunities that the sportsman has down there in the sportsman paradise. Oh, it's it's endless. I mean, uh, you know, that encompasses a lot, a lot of area and a lot of stuff. Um, you know, that goes all the way to, from Lafayette to Texas. Uh, you know, the beach, Johnson Bayou, Holly Beach. Uh, there's surf fishing all down the beach. You can 
you can come down without a boat and, and fish for four or five days and never fish the same spot twice out of your car down here. A um, lot of stuff to be done. Um, the casinos are definitely uh, an area of interest too for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things that it's just a place that you don't run out of things to do, in my opinion. Uh, definitely grew up here and moved away for a couple of years and couldn't get back fast enough. So it's definitely sportsman's paradise. No doubt. That, that's my problem is I don't come down there as often as I do because there's going to be that one time I go down there, I ain't coming back. I'm just going to stay. <laughs> You know, if, if not for anything, guys, it's some of the best eaten food that you will ever have in your life is down there. I mean, if you like Cajun food and if you just like good food, you know, I mean, they can introduce you to anything from boudin to beignets. I mean, it, it's it's there. I mean, it's it's wonderful. The people are friendly. It's just a great atmosphere. I love it. I'll tell you. Now, some of that stuff you eat, you about have to wipe your butt with a water hose. But that's the way I like it. I mean, I, I like <laughs> it good and hot and spicy and followed up with a good old sweet beignet. I mean, that's just some, that's some, that's, that's good clean living down there, man. And uh, is there anything else, uh, Lee? Any? What about your tackle? As far, now, you showed me some... Uh, some baits what would be some good rods and reels if, if you got a couple of them that maybe you can show some people to, that might yeah be absolutely to um absolutely i've been uh i've been with a louisiana based rod company for seven years now and they sponsor me all through all the redfish tours and everything like that and uh we've worked together on building a prototype and we finally got it how i want it and uh, this is the the deuce element uh, and who's this by check again? about it it's deucerods.com, D-U-C-E. Yeah. And you can check them out on the Internet. And we've got this full lineup coming up here very shortly. Uh, and it's the Element Series. Cool. Um, I'm not I'm not currently with the real company. Um, so I have, you know, I have no discrimination on that either which way. But uh, the Deuce product is, is definitely first class and, and has a lot of pros. Um, they use the Twisted Eye technology. And uh, I guess this is probably about the best way I can I can show you all. That's a spiral wrap. It's called a Robert's wrap. Okay. And it starts with the first one eye straight, and then it starts to curve until it gets to the fourth eye, and then they're inverted from there up. Uh, what that really? does is that keeps the line. Yeah, that keeps the line off the blank, and it keeps it from ever touching the blank once you load it up. Um, you know, a spinning rod is the most perfectly designed reel, or rod, excuse me, um, and then it never lets the line touch the blank. So with this one, I don't know if y'all can see the line or not. Now what, what, what weight, what length, what weight, what, what, what is that? So I keep two rods on my boat as far as, you know, everyday fishing. I'm going to keep a medium light, a six you know, 6'6 six, six to 6'9 six, medium light. Um, this prototype right here that we built, it's a little beefier medium light, but it's a really, really fast action. Really, really fast action on there, which means it's pretty stiff all the way up to the tip, and then it's yeah. got a real, real nice tip on it. So it, it gives you that ability to work those jigs and those baits. Um, and this one right here is, is the 6'6, six, six, um, fast action, medium light. And then I'll also okay. keep a seven foot medium in my boat as well. Yeah. So I mean, if you have a good, you know, I'd prefer a, a big, a, a nice stronger rod, or far, or far, you know, six six, or even a seven, kind of a beefy rod, like you were talking about on those big reds. And then if you're just really flipping in the marshes on the tailing reds or the speckled trout, or whatever, wouldn't you think a, a like a spinning rig would be just perfect for those? Or Absolutely, that's cast all the time. Well, I prefer a bait cast just because I've spent so much time with them in my hands growing up. You know, that's the rod and reel that I learned to cast. But when you show up to fish with us, the first thing I'm going to hand you is a spinning rod in my boat. Uh, not that we can't provide bait casters, but that's what just about every day my customers use is a spinning rod uh, in a medium action. Um, the thing is, you don't want to overpower and overload your tackle as far as going too heavy. 
mm-hmm. to interfere you feel on a bite. That's the biggest problem I see with a lot of people. You know, they will, we're going red fishing. So we're getting 100-pound braid, medium heavy, 7 foot 6, and heaviest stuff we can get, which is all fine and dandy if you're bait fishing or if you're doing something that doesn't require any finesse. But a lot of these people will get excited and buy a lot of heavy stuff. Um, not realizing that you're going to be artificial fishing or you're going to need a little bit of touch. So just keep that in mind always. You want to match your rod and reels in correlation to what kind of lure you're going to be throwing, how you're going to be throwing it. So, you know, bait, dead bait, stuff on the bottom that you're not going to need to feel a whole lot. Um, you know, once they have it, they've got it kind of deal. Go heavy. That's fine. But if you're going to be fishing a jig from anywhere from an eighth ounce to all the way up to an ounce, uh, you're going to want something somewhat light, um, somewhat to where you can feel that bite. Because a lot of times, especially when we're trout fishing, those bites aren't, you know, thump and then just hang on to it. It's a real quick little tick and then they drop it. So it's very, very important. And uh, with that being said, too, uh, line. Line is a huge deal. Um, we use braided line pretty much exclusively. Um, the only thing I don't use braided line on is top waters and in certain situations throwing a jig. Um, you know, other than that, we run braid, 20 to 40 pound braid on all of our rigs. Um, no stretch. I know you use the nano fill and, and you have loved it, and I have as well. Um, but there's a lot of benefits to that braided line and, and could definitely help out a lot of people just by changing what's on their spool. Yep, yep. Well, there you go. I mean, if it's going to get you fired up to go down there and catch a bunch of fish, I don't know what will. But, uh, Captain Lee, how's the best way to get a hold of you? best way to get a hold of me is to give our office a call at 337-540-2382. And that will get you to my wife, Carrie, and she runs our business and does a great job of it. Um, Or you can look us up on the web at www.calcashewpointcharters.com and check out our prices and all our packages and everything we offer there. And you can also go to Facebook and find me under Lee Doll Drill. And we also have a Calcasieu Point Charters Facebook page as well. So. If you can't find Captain Lee, you're not looking. But I'm telling you, boys, if you want an excellent time, if you want to be treated as well as anybody can ever treat you, you go down and fish with Lee. I think you've got a good idea of just what kind of guy he is well let me tell you in person he's far better if that's even possible but he is he's a great guy he's patient and let me tell you if he can put up with me he can put up with anybody because i'll tell you we had a blast when i fished with him and like i said i could go on and we could start a whole nother podcast on the stuff that went on while we were there from the get-go at the beginning all the way to the end and we had a blast or at least i did and uh lee's good oh, yeah. people uh the people around there are good they're they're just honest good hard working people you'll love it you'll love the accommodations he'll he'll be able to help you with all that stuff calcasieu point charters right there on beautiful calcasieu lake around lake charles louisiana i'm telling you there's plenty to do uh, other than the fishing the amenities around there are fine and uh, go go out there and uh and go fishing with with Captain Lee because I guarantee you he'll put you on the fish when nobody else can. But we want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in to our Fripp and Folly podcast. We want to thank the good people at Fripp and Folly for uh, here with the nice cool shirts and uh, to uh, bringing this out here. Go to FrippandFolly.com if you can't find those uh, kind of shirts that fits your uh, your outdoor needs from crappie fishing to red fishing to duck hunting to driving a tractor to a four-wheeler they got all kind of patterns and uh that's it lee have you got anything else you want to add or is there one more thing yeah um, yeah i also want to thank Rick and folly for uh for having me on and, and for you and everybody else um definitely go check out our show that that me and scott did on youtube you can go and you just youtube my name lee doll drill or Scott Turner in there, and I'm, I'm sure you can find it, uh, G3 Sportsman and Tailing Reds. and Go yep. check it out. Definitely an episode you don't want to miss, for sure. It was a lot of fun. But, Lee, thank you for uh, coming on here. It was, uh, it was touch and go 
in the beginning, but uh, <laughs> we got it worked out and everything uh, come together. And I, I, I tell you, I couldn't ask for a better guest. And thank you for uh, for taking a little time out of your day and, and joining us here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scott. We appreciate you. All right, for uh, all of us here at Crip and Folly, Captain Lee Daldrum, Calcasieu Point Charters, we're going to sign off. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can just go on later and find this on Facebook. I'm sure that Lee will have it on his page and my page. There'll be pages everywhere with this thing. We'll try to get some questions answered on there that you've asked and uh, especially the contact information for getting hold of Lee. So that's it. So thank you for your time this time. Until next time, I'm Scott Turnage for Captain Lee Daldrum. We are signing off.